coming up on Mountain News this morning. Copper thefts continue to plague a county in our region as police try to get to the bottom of it. And an Eastern Kentucky Fire Department spends the week getting used to its latest addition to help serve the community. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Oh, good morning to you. It's almost 632. I'm Dakota. It is February 9th. Good morning. It's Thursday. I almost forgot to say the day of the week. It's Thursday, so y'all know what day it is. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. Brandon, the, uh, you know what? I think it's the weather that always messes me up. You know how sometimes people complain, you know, how the weather will, like, mess up technology sometimes? That's my brain. The weather. That's actually going on right behind me right yep, now if you're looking yep. at the monitor. So uh, it's yeah. just... It's the wind, I'm telling you. It's, it is. It's a little bit uh, windy out there this morning. We're at a 41 mile an hour gust out in southern Kentucky. So again, mm -hmm. just be careful as you head out the door this morning. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look, see what's going on UVA wise. If it'll stay on for us there. Beautiful scene, 55 over there on campus. As we look back, looks like towards some type of sports field off in the distance there this morning. 46, the coldest spot in Jonesville, Monticello, 66. It is 632 in the morning. So we're going to, somebody's getting to 70 today. I'm going to go ahead and call it. Somebody's getting to 70 today, this afternoon. We're going to continue to see mild air come into play. Warm wind, 25 mile an hour, actual wind speed right now in Monticello. 18 in Somerset, 12 in Wise, 13 in Logan, 10 in Hazard. I'm giving you the double digit numbers here. 13 in London and Williamsburg this morning. So it is cranking. And again, our gust 36 now in Monticello. So that wind advisory in its effect is in effect and will continue to be in effect all the way through about 7 o'clock tonight in some counties. Now, again, some spotty rain chances out there this morning. Throw those temperatures out. Uh, we might as well just go ahead and say 60s across the board this morning because it's already warming up faster than we thought it would. Dakota? All right, Brandon, thank you. Well, four people from out of state are facing theft charges in southern Kentucky. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office says several items and vehicles were stolen from K&A auto sales in the Three Point community Tuesday. Deputies found one suspect who led them on a chase. They eventually arrested Jeremy Motley in McCreary County. They later found the three other suspects in a motel. Rocky Brady, Kristen Starleeper, and Brittany Fraley were all arrested. All four are from North Carolina, and they're all facing burglary and theft charges. One Eastern Kentucky Sheriff's Office is doing what it can to rein in the increase of copper thefts taking place across its county. Arlissa Williams was in Martin County to learn more about this issue. Since last year, the Martin County Sheriff's Office has seen numerous cases of copper theft across the county, with the department arresting 13 suspects in the last few months. You know, it may be in Tomahawk tonight, tomorrow night it may be in Pigeon Roost, and uh, there's just so many doing it. Uh, when you have people that get by with it, they see that their buddy's getting by with it, then they start doing it. Martin County Sheriff John Kirk says people are acquiring the copper through cable and phone lines. Individuals are cutting the lines, retrieving the copper, and then selling it to scrap yards for up to $4 a pound. With what they're making, they may make $200 or $300 off the copper that they steal tonight, but it may cost the phone company 10000 or 15000 to put it back. This can ultimately cause customers to pay more for their bill, but it can also cost people in the area much more than that. My chief deputy was there investigating and uh, an elderly man who has a lot of health issues uh, actually broke down and cried and he said, you know, I don't have uh, access to a phone. I'm a sick man and I don't have access to a phone. Uh, you know, I'm afraid that uh, if they keep cutting our phone lines that when I need an ambulance that I'll die before they get here. Those with the sheriff's office say without the manpower to fully assess this issue, they need help from the community. If they see anything suspicious, um, anybody around any power lines that are not marked AT&T or AEP or a power company um, that look like they're tampering with or cutting the lines to call us immediately. Martin County Sheriff's Office officials say this responsibility also falls on the scrap yards. If they fail to report someone trying to sell stolen copper, Sheriff Kirk says there will be consequences for them as well. In Martin County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Martin County Sheriff John Kirk says he's been in contact with the FBI to discuss this ongoing issue as well. He's looking to see if the copper theft can be considered a form of domestic terrorism which can dramatically alter how people are charged with this crime.
The Pikeville Fire Department has a new addition to its fleet, replacing a more than 40-year-old aerial truck. Well, this new truck, built specifically for the city's needs, has a 100-foot ladder and state-of-the-art fire and rescue features. From its water-wielding power to the extra bells and whistles, firefighters say it will help uh, their crews go above and beyond. With this truck, we actually have Bluetooth headsets. So what that does is it ties into our radio system. So we can not only if we're out on the fire scene, it, it goes under our helmets so we can work with them. We can also, if we're pumping the truck or operating the aerial, we can communicate with each other. The firefighters are training with the truck this week and they are excited to add it to their arsenal. People in Madison County are making use of a new Narcan vending machine. Voices of Hope helped set up the machine inside the Madison County Detention Center. The group says since the machine was installed back in December, 67 units of Narcan have been taken out. People are leaving jail, they're at a you know, much higher risk of overdose because they've been in there maybe like a week or a few days. Their tolerance starts to dip down. There's people who leave jail in overdose and die all the time. So they're some of the most important people to have that. Berkshire says they hope to place more vending machines like the one in Madison County across Kentucky going forward. After more than 10 years, Breathitt County schools will no longer be under any form of state management or assistance. The Kentucky Board of Education approved the measure yesterday. The school district has been under state management since December of 2012 and was moved to state assistance in December of 2019. With the move, no Kentucky school districts are currently under state assistance. Breathitt County Schools Superintendent Philip Watts, who took over as superintendent five years ago, says he's proud of the progress the district has made. A Mason County student recently received the ultimate assist on the basketball court from a player on the opposing team. Fleming County player Logan Applegate could tell that Declan Teitelbaum doesn't get a lot of playing time on the varsity team. So when he saw Declan take his shot and miss, he was there to help him rebound. Chad Hedrick has the touching story. <laughs> You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, and Declan Teitelbaum has given it his best shot over his 13 years of life. He's had a lot of challenges and has always kind of uh, had the cards stacked against him. And for him to literally have a shot, that's really cheesy to say, but for him to have a shot, it was just beautiful. Declan has had health challenges, illnesses, and allergies that have sometimes kept him from being a normal kid but that's never stopped him. I don't try to fight it or back down. I just go with the flow, I guess. On Saturday, Declan's school was playing Fleming County. With a few minutes left in the game, the seventh grader checked in, and what happened next has gone viral. They're saying, Declan Teitelbaum, and then it was kind of silent, and then he, it's in, and I, the whole gym was screaming. It took a couple attempts, but Declan made the layup with the assist from an unlikely teammate, his opponent, Logan Applegate. I'm seeing this kid, he's a little bit smaller than everybody else. Like, obviously I didn't know the circumstances that he's went through, but I just seen him and I thought, I mean, heck, give this man a shot. And what a shot it was, right before Declan's birthday. And I remember thinking like a, a week in advance, like, oh man, I gotta get that shot before I turn 13. I was like, well, that's really cool. The two and their families are now bonded forever, thanks to a play not drawn up during a timeout, but from just being a good sport. You know, for him to do that in that moment, you know, without being prompted, uh, just shows what kind of young man he is, what kind of, uh, you know, kindness he has in his heart, uh, and the values and sportsmanship and, and how he was raised. It's just like somebody you never met just feels so close in such an instant. It may have not been a buzzer beater, but it's certainly a victory. It just makes me feel like I'm playing for something now than more than just, you know, just playing. That was Chad Hedrick reporting. Declan is part of a research study for a white blood cell disease he has, and they moved here from Texas to be closer to Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Six forty one, that's what it's all about when you're playing sports at the any level. Anyway, all right, forecast today warm.
We're seeing temperatures already in the, well, I'm going to say 50s and 60s because Jones was our lone holdout, but they're still at 48 this morning and climbing. 66 in Monticello on the other end of the scale. A lot of 60s out there this morning. Temperatures actually going up. Let's talk about those wind gusts. Not seeing anything like we did earlier, but they're getting close again in Somerset and Monticello. 30 plus mile per hour gust out there. 29 getting close to 30 there in London. And you come even back to Pikeville. 20 mile an hour gust to 23 mile an hour gust at Wise and 22 at the Logan County Airport. The outdoor forecast is going to feature some windy conditions today. So again, maybe take your rain jacket instead of your umbrella. You probably won't need it much. Temperatures will top out near 70 for some folks. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you so much. And when we come back here on Mountain News this morning, a new study finds a link between common kinds of air pollution changes and blood pressure for the teen population.